Hello again and welcome to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us. This morning we're thinking about a problem that most of us gardeners have. We're thinking about slugs. Some of our subscribers have actually asked that we make a video about slugs and controlling slugs, which is not the easiest thing to make a video about. It's a slightly sort of controversial area, but we're going to just talk in general terms about controlling slugs. What I would say to begin with is we all need to make our gardens really friendly to wildlife to encourage the natural predators of the slugs into our garden. Creatures like frogs and hedgehogs really love the slugs and help to control them. And everything that we can do to encourage those sort of wild creatures into our garden is going to be beneficial to us as gardeners. So for instance, if you've got quite a small garden, which is totally enclosed by fences, you can have holes in the bottom of the fences in certain places to allow the hedgehogs in. If you've got a garden big enough to have a wildlife pond, it's a great idea to build a pond in the garden to encourage the frogs and other creatures in. So make your garden wildlife friendly and the natural predators will help to predate the slugs and prevent serious damage to air crops. But obviously there are many times when those creatures alone are not going to completely deal with the slug problem and we have to take some sort of action. And we're just going to talk briefly now about some of the things that we can do. We're going to think to begin with about keeping the slugs off our crops. Actually sort of forming barriers to prevent them from attacking our crops. And I'm going to talk about various options available to us here. One of the options would be to buy something like slug defense barrier granules. Now what these are, are granules, like so, a little bit like perlite in a way I guess, and you are supposed to put those down around your plants and that will actually prevent the slugs from crawling over to attack them. Now if you've got a pot you would probably actually put that as a sort of type of mulch you're covering around the top of the pot. If you'd got crops in the garden, then you might actually form a sort of physical barrier around the crops. So that's one idea, slug defence barrier granules. Now in the same idea, now this is another very uh, old uh, idea, is to actually put copper tape around pots and containers. So say that you've got hostas like this, and you wanted to prevent the slugs from climbing up, and crawling up and getting into and destroying your hostas, you could actually use some of this copper tape and you could put it around, it's sticky, you just take the backing off, and you could form a barrier because apparently the slugs really hate trying to crawl over this copper tape and they're supposed to give up and they're supposed to go away. Now some of the much cheaper ideas for preventing the slugs from attacking your plants these two pots of hostas here, in this one pot, here we've got crushed eggshells. And it is said that again, the slugs don't like crawling over the eggshells, and that will help protect your, pot, your plants in the pots. Similarly, in this pot here, we've got some horticultural grit. And again, it is said that the slugs don't like crawling over this grit and it will keep them away from the hostas. Some people say this is very, very good. Some people say it doesn't work. It's very much open to opinion. But those are some ideas for forming barriers to prevent the slugs from attacking your plants. When you're actually planting potatoes, uh, one of the things that we've talked about before now these are very, very old fashioned ideas, but many people still swear by them, is to actually use things like ash and soot to protect the potatoes down in the ground, to keep the slugs away from them. So when you're planting your lovely potatoes in the ground, if just above them you put quite a thick barrier of ash or of soot, many of the old gardeners said that that's a great way of keeping the slugs away because they don't like going through this barrier. I've heard it said that soot is the most effective, but many people talk about using ash as well. Now if you want to actually 
Do something to the slugs to get rid of the slugs rather than just keeping them away from your crops. If you want to actually eliminate the slugs, one of the ideas that lots of people use is beer traps. Now many people make their own beer traps. Apparently the slugs are really attracted to the beer and they fall into the beer trap and that will be the end of the slug. Um, many people make their own beer traps but you can buy them as well. And here we've got a sort of uh, supposedly a state-of-the-art beer trap that we actually bought for the purposes of, of this demonstration. So you've got the receptacles there and you fill those with beer. Those have got some beer in, they're not fully full, you'd actually fill more than that. And put the lid back on. And apparently the slugs go in at the sides and they're intoxicated by the smell of the beer and the odour and everything. And they don't want to come out, they probably actually sort of fall into the receptacles, etc, etc. So that's quite an organically friendly, I think, way of dealing with slugs with an old-fashioned beer trap. One of the ways that we really think is, is a good idea, that we use, is nemoslug. This is using nematodes. And so what you do is you actually buy the packets of the nemoslug. You keep them in the fridge until you want to use them, and there is a use-by date that you've got to use them by. And then when you want to use them, you take the nemoslug, the nematodes, out, um, most people just simply use a watering can. You empty the packet into the watering can, stir it up to activate the nematodes, and then if you've got a really coarse rose on the end there, you can actually then pour it onto the area that you want to protect. Or alternatively, you could, I guess, use an applicator like that on your hose pipe. Uh, whether that's as good and whether it's actually coarse enough I don't know, because you, you've got to have a coarse rose on there, otherwise the nematodes get chogged up and they don't actually come out the way that they should. But the theory is that you spread those nematodes out onto your garden, onto your potato patch, whatever it is that you want to protect, and the nematodes are activated, and these microscopic little creatures go about in the ground, and they find the slugs, and they actually penetrate the slug's body and actually uh, kill them and the slugs are under the ground. They don't come out or anything, and there's no actual poison involved or anything like that. So it is supposed to be a really organically friendly way of dealing with the issue of slugs. Now, those are the seven that, we've talk that I've talked about. I've talked about seven ways of controlling slugs. I haven't actually mentioned anything about slug pellets, and I'm not really going to mention anything about slug pellets. We try not to use slug pellets. We don't think that they're an environmentally friendly uh, way of dealing with slugs. But if you are going to use slug pellets, please do try to use ones where it says that they are organically friendly, that they are more natural. Apparently these days there are some available that are better. Uh, it's said that it causes the slugs to actually go into the ground to die, rather than just dying on the surface, where they can be eaten by other creatures like your hedgehogs and your uh, frogs and everything, and the poison uh, will go to them. But if, if the slugs are actually dying down in the ground, then uh, it's safer. But as I said, I haven't used that as one of the seven. I've just explained our attitude towards the slug pellets. So those are our ideas then about how you can control slugs, about how you can possibly deal with the slug issue. I know that certainly this year it is quite a, a big issue with some people. A friend of ours was saying only the other day that his entire crop of runner beans seemed to have been wiped out almost overnight. And so, you know, it is a serious issue, but hopefully this has given you some idea about what you can do to protect your garden from the slugs. And we will come back to this issue in later videos as well. It's starting to rain, Nadge is getting wet, and so I think we'll leave it there. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Hope you found this interesting and informative. Thank you for joining us.